좋은 관계의 기본은 귀 기울여 듣는 것이다. 그것이 사람과의 관계든 언어와의 관계든. Until two years ago, I never thought I would learn new languages. I have to say that I had this thing on the back of my head where I was always interested in, in the ways people speak in new languages, just the sound of the languages. I never knew how I would start, let alone how I would do it. I quickly realized that I had done it before with French and English, and therefore I could do it with other languages that I wanted to start in my life. So I'm currently living in Kenya, and I have to say that in Kenya alone, there are almost like 50-something languages that are spoken here, and that is not including English and Kiswahili, which are the main languages that are spoken here. It is a community of people from all walks of life, from all different countries. I thought I should mention this so that I can give you a picture of why my interest kind of developed to where it is right now. Everybody in the world probably knows that Kenyans are really good at running, but the most people don't know about their languages. You know, how many languages do they speak? Kenya, a country located in the Horn of the East Africa. It is bordered by countries like Somalia, Ethiopia, Uganda, South Sudan, and Tanzania. It is also near the Indian Ocean. Other than the famous runners, you probably know Kenya for its famous wildlife, frightful and astonishing lions. But you can also find the rarest birds found in Africa, the flamingo. You also know Lupita Nyong'o, who's a very famous Hollywood actor. You must be wondering, how did I start learning Korean and Spanish? How is it all connected? It's all about adventure. The fact that I meet other people around the world, the fact that I have access to these languages or people who speak these languages, I think this has been the spark of my interest in languages. I used to hang out with friends who speak Korean and it was so interesting to know what they were saying or how they were communicating. And so I think that was where the spark of interest came from. So you find that it's not about the resources that we can use in order to learn a language. It is how resourceful can you be in order to combine all the resources that you need or create the resources that you need in order to learn that language. When I look back, I find that just the fact that I was living near or I was living with this um, foreigner here in Kenya or even in Kenya my, uh, itself has allowed me or sparked this interest not only that, it has kept me to keep going. And that's very important whenever you're learning a new language, to find that consistency. How do you come back? How do you not give up? So if you can find a language that you're exposed to on a regular basis, there is a likelihood that you'll get better at it because you're just exposed to it. Imagine if you're living uh, in Kenya like me, it would be so easy to learn Kiswahili. I usually tell myself that People who live in a country where their target language is, they're very lucky to get better because it's almost like a forced immersion. You don't have any other reason but to just speak. So that can be both a motivation and an inspiration to keep going, but that can also be something bad or you know challenging for people who are learning a language. Nevertheless, there is a very good thing that happens once you learn a new language. When your brain sees that you've actually successfully uh, learned a language and you can communicate using that language, something interesting happens and you build up that confidence. And that confidence can be used to learn other languages. For instance, for me, when I started becoming fluent in Spanish, it made me feel like I was capable of doing it in Korean. And so I attached this confidence that I got in Spanish as, and I used this as a motivation to learn Korean as well. So I decided to go on a little adventure with my friends. This is my drive. This is the reason why I learn languages because other than this, there is no reason why I'm learning languages. It's just to speak, use this language with other people. I speak two languages, fluency, English and Swahili. Um, I'm learning Japanese. I speak English fluently uh -huh. and I know other bits and pieces of other languages. Is English, Arabic and Swahili. I thought it would be interesting to ask them what are the languages that they are learning and why? There's a lot of drama like nitty-gritty 
Um, and then like learning how to speak casually. Uh. That'd be tough. Yeah, wow. I want to improve my French <laughs> and I also want it's to learn well, Swahili because I'm staying here and it's really good opportunity to study and also like when I speak Swahili like Kenyan people really you know get interested in me and they when you go to other places countries yeah and when you actually know the languages that way you can actually connect with people there is a very good equation, I would say, by Steve Kaufman. He's like a very good person to follow when you're learning languages. And he says that you need three things in order to learn successfully a language. The first thing is time. The second thing is consistency. And the third thing is the ability to know your relationship with the language. At least that's how I understood it. And you find that these three things, maybe even you can add more, but these three things are truly the core of, of having a new language journey. Well, the time is just to know that it's going to take a long time or you have to make time for it. And consistency, if you don't practice enough, you'll forget. Just look at any language that you started learning and you gave it up. Do you still remember it? The ability to understand your relationship with language, and this is where you you're capable of knowing what's you know what's going on. Like, where are you at? How far have you come uh, with this language? It's all about the journey, and it's all about loving it rather than how can I learn so many languages? What do you need to do in order to start a new language? I'm afraid that I'm just gonna have to say this, but you just need to start. When we're talking about you know running, for instance. You just don't learn about running and there you go, you have it. Well, actually what they do is that they run. Think about learning a language as practicing every single day. So what is the practice for a language learner? Well, it is to sit down and study. When you think about learning a language, it is all about sitting down and doing some form of active or passive learning that will advance you into becoming fluent. It's not about how can I learn all this these different languages in six months or later on one year when you try to do that well it can be a good motivation but it's more than that and that's all about being human being the goals change all the time i just wanted to put it out there so that you realize that it's not just about languages but it's all about this journey how are you going to be using these languages do you need to learn these languages in the first place i'm currently learning or interested in so many languages but for sure, something that I would say is that I'm interested in languages that are nearing extension, especially the languages in Africa. I would like to learn some of them or work with these languages in the future. So I hope I can deliver to this project and make this my own in my lifetime. If you want to join me on this language learning or learning journey, I would appreciate it if you like and comment what you learn on this video. Why are you learning the languages that you're learning? And I have a newsletter that you'll probably like if you like this video and other videos that I have put out in the past, like this one, like how I learn English without traveling. Feel free to subscribe in the links down below and on this channel so that you don't miss any video in the future. I'll see you next week. Bye.